So thank you all. Uh, we want to start by thanking the members of the community and the members of the press for being with us today. We are uh, the Immigration Resistance Table. We're a coalition of uh, pro-immigrant rights groups in Colorado. And we are uh, having a press conference today to uh, uh, do a couple of things. Uh, first, like uh, reveal uh, a press, uh, reveal uh, some scorecards from on the recent immigration bills that we have seen that have come from Congress. We also have a wide variety of uh, members of the community, leaders in the community, executive directors from different organizations. And in, uh, we also want to thank uh, uh, the American Friends Service Committee uh, organization for hosting this event, uh, Together Colorado for hosting this event, Colorado, uh, Colorado Jobs with Justice, and the Colorado Immigrants uh, Rights Coalition, as well as Mi Familia Vota for hosting this event. Um, after four years of attacks on the immigrant community under the Trump administration, Congress and the Biden administration face an important decision. They, continue, uh, they can continue politics as usual, or they can take bold action to protect nearly 12 million undocumented immigrants that form an integral part of our communities. We, the Immigration Resistance Table, which is a coalition of 22 Colorado nonprofit organizations is advocating for the just and human rights of immigrants and the policies that affect them. We urge Congress and the Biden administration to mitigate the damage from the last administration. And we uh, pursue a sweeping and comprehensive relief for the undocumented community. There are a number of bills that are being considered by Congress and we have analyzed them using our collective values and goals. And with that, I would love to uh, introduce our first uh, speaker, Lisa Duran, the Executive Director for the Colorado Immigrants Rights Coalition. Thank you very much, Chava. Um, I'm very proud to stand with our 22 partner organizations of the Immigration Resistance Table because the IRT is such an important entity in the state of Colorado. We work to protect immigrant communities from state violence and we center our community's leadership and voice in the solutions that we all need to create an immigration system we can be proud of, one that recognizes the strength of a diverse, inclusive, and just economy that benefits everyone, not just a few. I'm here very proudly to uh, open up for you the framework that we have used to come up with the, uh, the report card and the assessment of what we are seeing at the national level. And the Immigration Resistance Table has done a beautiful job of creating um, a space for conversation and, uh, and analysis and has done a great job of then promoting and, and uh, publicizing what the positions are. I'd like to uh, line them, outline them for you and then subsequent speakers will dive deeply into the specific bills. But the framework of the IRT has as, uh, uh, as core values these following points, uh, that we need to develop a clear path to citizenship for 11 million or almost 12 million undocumented immigrants that we need to make family reunification a top priority and stop the militarization of immigration enforcement at the border and internally in this country. That we need to respect the civil and human rights of migrants and refugees. And very importantly, that we protect the labor rights of all workers and including agricultural workers. Uh, we know that immigrants, refugees and asylees must have full access to services. And we know that the United States must support policies that reduce the need so that people have to migrate. So to create fair economies and reducing violence from state and criminal groups uh, around, around the world. Uh, often policies that the United States government has, um, has actually helped to put into place. We also wanna say very clearly that we do appreciate the leadership that members of our congressional delegation have shown in signing on to and sponsoring different bills now in the Congress that are designed to open a path to citizenship 
but we see over and over again that the bills do not go far enough or they have exclusions within them that fly in the face of the humanitarian crisis we are witnessing. So we would like to work with our delegation to fight every effort to narrow the opportunities for undocumented immigrants to achieve citizenship in the United States. And we look to all of our congressional delegation to work vigorously to amend bills now, uh, on, uh, now winding through the process so that they actually meet the needs of the immigrant community and our nation, something that is not in conflict with each other. Um, we need to provide a real, a real solution to the humanitarian crisis of immigration that we see uh, unfolding in our nation today. I wanna thank you all and I'll turn it back to you, Chava. Thank, thank you so much, Lisa. And um, before we continue on to the next speaker, uh, I would just like to remind everyone to uh, drop your questions or comments if you're on Facebook, uh, put it on the comments section. And for the press uh, that's joined us through uh, Zoom, uh, please use the chat uh, functionality to uh, drop your questions or comments. We do. We will uh, finish this um, uh, press conference with a, a question and answering section, in which you can. We will be uh, answering all of the questions that you have. And with that, I would like to uh, turn, uh, you know, the the microphone to our next uh, speaker, uh, Jennifer Piper, the program director with the American Friends uh, Service Committee. Thank you, Chava. Um, it's good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here with us. We feel that it's really important to talk about each of the pieces of legislation that's currently pending in Congress and measure them against what we've heard from our community, uh, both citizen and immigrant, is most needed for um, an effective, a humane, and a transparent system for immigration. So today we're going to be talking about four bills. Uh, we're going to start with the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021. It was introduced by Senator Bob Menendez and Representative Linda Sanchez. And um, that is the most inclusive path of all of the bills currently pending in Congress. It would include a path for most folks who are undocumented and most essential workers DACA recipients, TPS, and DED recipients, all of those folks who have a current temporary status or who are essential workers would be on a quicker path to um, permanent residency and eventual citizenship. Um, it does expand also a, a family case management approach and creates a better way for Central Americans to reunite their families in the face of repression, corruption, and, and war. Um, it also protects workers who are victims of workplace retaliation from deportation, which is a uh, very particular labor rights uh, demand that we've had for many years. And it also allows access to U visas for immigrants who suffer serious labor violations. But one of the biggest cons is that one of the th reasons that we can't give this bill an A is because it also expands some of the bars that make you uh, uh, ineligible for citizenship, not only for folks who are currently undocumented, but for other folks who are going through the process to become citizens right now and through other paths to status. And it also um, maintains a system called employment verification that we know has failed actually for over 30 years since 1986, uh, both for employers and for workers. So I at the end of the day, we gave this bill a B. And what would help it um, be uh, an A grade bill is something that our other speakers will be talking about soon. And um, the next bill we, that we wanted to talk about is the Citizenship for Essential Workers Act. So this act was introduced by Congressman Alex Padilla in the Senate. Senator Padilla and Congressman Joaquin Castro in the House. And uh, it would provide a path to status, but for only about 4.4 million folks. Um, and this pathway to citizenship is for essential workers and their family members. So we appreciate the fact that they, the bill really looks at keeping families together and seeing people as a whole 
person and a whole unit, not just workers. And it would also repeal some of the bars that keep our families separated, keep us away from our loved ones, like three and 10 year bars. And it provides relief um, to some immigrants who've lost their jobs as well because of unsafe working conditions. Um, one of our concerns about this bill is, again, it uh, expands some of the bars uh, that would push people off of a path to citizenship. And it also requires people to have consistent employment, which is really difficult to do over the last year of this pandemic and in particular industries. So in the end, we gave this bill a B minus uh, because it doesn't cover everyone who needs to be covered because it expands the bars we were talking about um, and because the citizenship process is pretty lengthy and pretty expensive for folks. Um, so then moving to the next bill, um, we look again at another bill that instead of addressing everyone who has temporary status and everyone who's undocumented and the mixed status families that many of us live in, this bill would look at putting people on a path to citizenship who are doc dreamers, some dreamers, TPS or DED, which are humanitarian temporary status. And they would provide pathway to citizenship but what we know about the DREAM Act uh, portion of this bill is it's not a clean DREAM Act. It expands a lot of bars and it relies on uh, databases that have racial profiling, like so-called gang databases, um, that where you don't actually have to have been convicted of anything. And so we think only uh, about 33% of youth who were brought to the US um, would qualify under this bill or less. Um, the Promise Act side of the bill is really good. It would include almost all of the people who have temporary protected status or DED. And so um, because of those restrictions for DREAMers, we gave this bill a C. And we're calling on the Senate to really make changes that would give this bill a, a better grade and meet more of our community's need and recognize the long roots that DREAMers have in our communities. Um, and then our last bill is the Farm Workforce Modernization Act. And um, I actually want to pause here because in the last couple of days, um, we were shocked to learn of Juan Ponzo de Moxlo's tragic accident on Tuesday, March 30th, while working at the Shelton Dairy in LaSalle, Colorado. As a movement that works towards justice for all immigrants, we would like to offer our sincere condolences to his wife, Serafina Caluya Gonzalez, his three children, and his community. While nothing can replace this beloved husband and father, mourners and friends are encouraged to contribute to Juan's legacy for his family, established by frontline farming. And I'd like to ask us to all hold a moment of silence for one who was killed in that tragic accident. As you know, agricultural workers suffer fatal on the job injuries at a very high rate and federal oversight of this industry is extremely lacking. For this reason, we urge the Colorado State Legislature to support SB 21087 concerning agricultural workers' rights. And we also urge Congress to reconsider the Farm Workforce Modernization Act of 2021. This bill was introduced by Representative Zoe Lofgren and it passed the House last month. It lays out a lengthy complicated path to legal status for undocumented far farm workers, expands an abusive H-2A visa program, and requires nationwide E-Verify use for all agricultural employment. It does not put in place any new oversight of the agricultural industry or workforce safety practices or accountability. While it does provide a pathway to citizenship for some undocumented workers, the path to even be able to apply can be as long as eight years before you begin another eight-year process. It requires a 
burdensome documentation that's very difficult to provide when your life is um, temporary and mobile. And um, it requires indentured servitude of the folks who want to apply, meaning they have to keep working in farm work for many years after this act is passed. For, the re for those reasons, the expansion of exploitative guest worker programs, the requirement to obtain certified agricultural worker status and conditions eligibility on working, we gave this bill a D because while it provides a path to citizenship, it's a long onerous system that doesn't respect people's human rights. With that, I'll turn it back to Chava. Thank you, thank you, Jennifer, for giving us a really well uh, thorough um, perspective on all of these four bills. As you can see, uh, none of them got an A, a passing grade, um, or a perfect grade, but there's, there's still work that needs to be done um, with these bills, and there's a lot of concerns that we have as uh, uh, immigrants' rights organizations. And with that, uh, I will also like to uh, bring up or pass the mic to our uh, um, state senator, uh, Julie Gonzalez from uh, Colorado Senate, Senate District 34 to tell us about um, what's, uh, what's happening in the Colorado legislature and why uh, uh, you know, uh, the federal uh, legislation needs to be uh, a broad path. So uh, Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Chava. And thank you to everyone who's um, doing work uh, outside of the Capitol, out in community, because y'all's work uh, in community makes our work uh, in, at, you know, at 200 East Colfax, at the Colorado State Capitol, and also um, all of the work possible in Washington, DC. Um, it is y'all's efforts and energy uh, that makes um, our policy work possible. Uh, so thank you. Um, my name is Julie Gonzalez and I'm honored to represent Northwest and downtown Denver in the Colorado State Senate. Um, at this moment, we are in the Senate are debating the long bill, uh, our Colorado state budget. And uh, we know a few things to be true. We know that um, uh, crisis exacerbates inequality and uh, that if you are wealthy and well-connected, you've basically um, uh, been able to recover from the impacts of the pandemic. But if you're working class or even middle class, um, the pandemic, it's uh, ensuing economic impacts um, are still very much real. And too many people um, have been left out uh, completely of uh, re pandemic relief. So that's been our work at the Colorado uh, General Assembly, the Colorado State Senate this year, is to uh, not just simply um, get back to normal. Because we know that if, if uh, that normal wasn't working for far too many of us in the first place, right? And so how we go about enacting policies uh, that bend systems towards justice. That is our work at the Colorado General Assembly this year. And I am proud of the work that we are doing to pass proactive legislation, to open up accessibility uh, for undocumented people, uh, to participate in and access um, uh, state benefits, um, housing and rental assistance, um, to access undocumented, uh, I'm sorry, unemployment insurance and, and other types of programs. Um, but we know uh, that as long as um, fear continues to be an overriding factor, um, fear of uh, any information that uh, folks give to state agencies, that the fear that that may be utilized uh, against them um, and, and quite frankly raided by agencies like ICE, um, that, that communities will continue to um, uh, shy away from uh, stepping up and, and accessing uh, those much needed services. And so we're also going through and um, working to protect Coloradans personal identifying information from being uh, able to get accessed by ICE. And uh, quite frankly, we know that survivors of crime who, um, who have been able um, to 
uh, cooperate in um, within within the criminal legal system uh, to prosecute um, uh, those uh, perpetrators of harm, um, that we should have a clear standardized statewide process through which um, survivors of crime can go through and, and access a um, certification for a U visa, right? That's the work that we can do at the state level. And uh, I'm really proud uh, that my colleagues uh, here at the General Assembly um, have been able to move forward on all of those efforts. And yet we know um, that the work that we're doing at the, states, uh, at the state legislature is but one piece, that we need Congress to act, that we need Congress to stop uh, playing political games with people's lives. For far too long, um, people, uh, politicians on both parties um, have uh, treated immigration like a political football. And this, uh, this table and, and y'all's report card, I think is really important because it starts to hold uh, elected officials at the state and at the federal level accountable to community-based demands. That is the work that um, I am so appreciative for because it gives us the space uh, to continue to, to pass uh, good policy here in Denver and also in Washington, DC. And I just wanna say um, to provide a little bit of context, a decade ago, um, 15 years ago, um, immigration related uh, policy items at the state capitol would have basically um, frozen uh, debate, would have uh, shut down uh, the Senate floor. I'm just stepping off the Senate floor right now after running an amendment to pass $5 million uh, in housing assistance for undocumented uh, Coloradans, right? Like, and the fact that I was able to just go run the amendment, have it pass, and then come over and join y'all, now I'm gonna go bounce back over there, that is transformative and it demonstrates uh, the power that y'all are building outside the, outside the dome to give us space inside the dome to work. Thank y'all for everything that you do. It's, it's up to Congress um, to, uh, to, to move and to enact transformative policy. Yeah, thank y'all. Thank you so much, um, Senator Gonzalez, for that very thorough um, analysis and update about what's happening in our state capital in Colorado, what policies are making the lives of uh, our, our immigrant community better. And I, I think we do have a question for you uh, from the Facebook Live. This is Gina McPhee, and she asks, what can be done to curb the racist and abusive practices of ICE and border protection? ICE terrorizes our community. What would you say to that? You know, there's a lot of work that Congress needs to do, quite frankly, but that doesn't mean that we at the state legislature are going to uh, just kick back and, and not do anything about that either. We're proactively running legislation uh, to uh, protect Coloradans' uh, private identifying information so that it can't be accessed um, by uh, uh, um uh, by ICE, and we're also doing work to hold um, uh, the geo detention center uh, and, and other uh, immigration detention facilities accountable uh, to protect human rights and, and health and safety standards. Um, we know that this is incredibly important, particularly right now in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and so that's the work that we're engaged in uh, here at the um, at the local level uh, to hold those agencies accountable. But quite frankly, there's a lot of work that needs to happen um, at the federal level. And so I would defer to my colleagues um, who are speaking to uh, what's going on with Congress. But I think that as you can see from the, the um, immigrant rights tables, um, immigrant resistance tables um, report card, there is still a lot to be desired in terms of ensuring that um, there is uh, just and transformative policy that protects everyone. Thank you, thank you so much, Senator Gonzalez, for that um, for that for that answer. And uh, before we move on, I also would like to acknowledge um, Areli Quintas, who left us a message on Facebook saying, uh, "Gracias, Senadora Julie Gonzalez." Thank you, Senadora Julie Gonzalez. Um, and with that, um, I think we have also the uh, uh, the scorecard up for you all to see uh, in terms of what legislation uh, is happening at the federal level. And, uh, and, the, and the grade that we gave that specific um, piece of legislation. 
And uh, with that, uh, I just want to thank again, Senator uh, Julie Gonzalez for joining us today. And um, I would also like to pass on uh, to our next uh, speaker, um, Pamela Resendiz, the Executive Director with the Colorado Just with Justice. Hey y'all, um, good afternoon. Thank you so much for um, hosting this space and for having me uh, be part of it. Like Chava mentioned, uh, my name is Pamela Resendez. I use they, them, ella pronouns, and I'm the executive director for Colorado Jobs for Justice. Colorado Jobs for Justice is a long lasting coalition uh, composed of uh, organized labor, community partners, people of faith and students who come together to advocate for workers' rights with a lens of economic and racial justice. Um, a little bit about me is that for the uh, past 20 years, I grew up undocumented. I was undocumented until uh, DACA became an, a, an opportunity for folks to apply. Um, I'm currently now a U visa holder um, and hope to make my uh, path to become an LPR um, and follow through that process. Um, we are here because um, essential workers who are undocumented continue to be at the front lines of this pandemic. From the ones who are building our city, to the ones who are picking the food that we put on our table, to the ones who are making sure that our places of work um, and our the community spaces are clean. Uh, before the pandemic, undocumented workers faced risk of deportation just by driving or by showing up to their place of work and they're potentially being arrayed. These are still risks that our undocumented workers face. But now during the pandemic, they have an additional risk and that risk is potential deaths. They are being asked to work um, or at times is the only option that they have uh, to, in order to continue to be able to have a house or to um, buy groceries or to have access to the medication that they or their family may need. Um, and not only that, workers are still and have been forced to work in unsafe uh, settings without the appropriate uh, PPE. Um, and also they have not been able to have uh, easy access to the vaccine. Um, our workers who are undocumented are and have always been essential to our economy, to our society, and to our community. And this pandemic has only demonstrated how essential workers are and how they need to have immediate relief and an accessible path uh, for citizenship that honors the role that they play in our society and a speedy solution. We cannot continue to wait for a solution that's going to take up to 20 to 10 years for folks to become citizens. They've demonstrated the importance that they hold um, currently in the pandemic um, and even before the pandemic and after the pandemic. And it is important that we as a community continue to advocate for undocumented workers to be able to have that path to citizenship and be able to continue to be in a place of work without the fear of retaliation or the fear of being um, deported just for trying to continue to sustain their families as well as contribute to the fabric of society. Um, once again, I wanna thank y'all for having me um, and I will pass it off to Chava. Thank you, Pamela, for, uh, for your words. And before we, we move on to our next speaker, um, I would just like to remind everyone to drop your questions and comments on the Facebook Live uh, on the comment section, or if you're a member of the press, you can also do that on the using the chat functionality of the of the Zoom. Um, our next speaker will be, um, I'm sorry, before we move to our next speaker, we have a, um, uh, a video message from Reverend uh, Betty Wen. She is a multicultural and advocacy ministries developer at Mountain Sky Conference of the United Methodist Church. And uh, she's a faith leader at Together Colorado. Ministries developer for the Mountain Sky Conference of the United Methodist Church. 
The Mountain Sky Conference of the United Methodist Church includes about um, 370 local churches spanning in the states of Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, Utah, and the city of Salmon, Idaho. I am also um, a faith leader with Together Colorado. Together Colorado is a multi-faith, multi-racial, um, statewide community organization, and I am part of the Immigration Committee. I come to you today as a faith leader, also a community member, and a child of immigrant parents. I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but my parents escaped Vietnam on boat a few years after the Vietnam War. I have heard some stories and experiences that my parents faced. They share stories of pain and triumphs. They have shared stories of discrimination, racism, and extreme hospitality. They have experienced some things that are unspeakable and it's so hard for them to even think about or share. But they have also experienced glimpses of heaven on earth. I'm humbled and grateful to be able to share today a little bit um, from my faith tradition as a United Methodist, an invitation, a call. Today just marks a few days after Easter Sunday in my faith tradition, some would say Easter Sunday is the most important Christian holiday in the Christian calendar because Easter represents joy and life and celebration, hope. But I have to admit and confess that this year I was not able to live into that fullness of joy, of hope, of renewal. I was kind of stuck in Holy Saturday, the Saturday right before Easter. Holy Saturday represents pain, loss, despair, fear. In many ways, I have been living in Holy Saturday for quite a while, and some of you may have as well. This makes me think and wonder if our immigrant siblings are experiencing Holy Saturday in their lives, if many of our immigrant families are experiencing fear and hopelessness, despair each and every moment of their lives. We may ask, what does this have to do with us? And so it makes me think of another uh, theme, a part of Easter. Easter also represents reconciliation with God, creator, and with one another. And so what does it mean that we are part of reconciling with others? What does it mean that we are also living into dreaming and being a part of beloved community? Dear Colorado Congress people, almost all of our faith traditions include core teachings about caring for the least of these, our neighbors, to welcome the strangers, to even leave wheat behind so that those who are coming after us can glean from it, to love our neighbor, and so many more holy scriptures speaking to caring of others. Today, I don't uh, want to lift up those scriptures, but I wanted to name Queen Esther and Moses. Queen Esther and Moses, I don't think would ever describe themselves as courageous, but for me, they are the epitome of courageous leaders. They were asked by their creator, their God, to hear the cries of the people's pain, to witness the oppression. And because of it, they were to be a part of bringing dignity, hope, wholeness, and joy. I would ask that you will also be bold to lead with courage, just as Esther and Moses did in supporting a pathway to citizenship for everyone within our communities. To strengthen bills that would ensure respect 
dignity and honor to all our neighbors. As a faith leader, as community leaders, may we value people over profits. May we seek to see the worth and dignity and value of our neighbors, that we cannot live without one another. We cannot survive without one another. And that we should not exclude people based on minor offenses or interactions that is within a racist law enforcement system and racist systems. One way of seeking reconciliation and in living into beloved community that Easter represents to bring healing, wholeness, joy to one another is for our country to have a fair and safe immigration process that honor families, that values them and see dignity. I recognize that this is not easy work. It is not simple work. It will take courage. It will take leaders like you who are willing to imagine a new way, a way that moves all people who are metaphorically are in Holy Saturday to be able to move into Easter Sunday. Thank you for being courageous leaders. Thank you to um, Reverend uh, Betty Wen for those words. Although she is not able to join us in person, she was kind enough to uh, record this video for all of us. Um, so thank you to her. Um, our next speaker will be um, uh, a member of the community of the Ni Uno Mas table. Uh, her name is Gabi Medina. Hola, buenas tardes. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de pasar el mensaje de los miembros de la Mesa de Unión a Más, quien están, quienes son grupos eh, de familias que están pasando por algún un proceso de deportación, ya sea personal o de sus familiares. Y el pensamiento que en el grupo tenemos para una reforma que que El deseo que tenemos es que sea integral, que sea justa para todos y que cambien algunas políticas que afectan a tantas y tantas familias. Algunos de estos pensamientos y deseos que tenemos son el camino a la ciudadanía. Todos que contribuimos a este país, que tengan la misma oportunidad de hacerse ciudadanos sin tener que ser un obstáculo en no, no hablar el idioma. Que personas que cometieron un delito y que ya fueron eh, condenados y pagaron con la sociedad, que no sean castigados con una deportación. Que quiten la ley que criminaliza la entrada sin permiso. Que, otras, que den oportunidades a las personas que cometieron un delito que se puedan volver a unificar. Merecemos una oportunidad. No es fácil de emigrar. No somos perfectos, pero sí merecemos una oportunidad. Es el pensamiento que tiene uno de nuestros miembros. Se llama Magdalena. La reunificación familiar. Cuando alguien entra ilegalmente, no debe de ser criminalizado. Deben de quitar esta ley. Deben de quitar los castigos de 10 y 20 años y el de por vida. Que el camino sea seguro y transparente y no de tanta discreción. Que incluya a cualquier persona que ha sido deportada y que tenga la oportunidad de volverse a reunir con su familia y a la vida que dejó aquí que incluya a cualquier persona eh, y a los niños que han sido separados de sus familias en las fronteras, que los vuelva a juntar y que indemnicen a las familias por el trauma y el daño que causaron por esta terrible experiencia. 
respetar los derechos civiles y humanos de los migrantes y refugiados. Las políticas deben de explicar, los policías deben de explicar bien los derechos y no colaborar con ICE. Debe de haber oportunidad de defensa y de tener una representación legal y justa. Un permiso para estar aquí legal. Reconocer los derechos que hay es por los inmigrantes y sus esfuerzos de conseguir derechos laborales. Oportunidad sin, el, sin respetar el color de piel y sin el perfil racial. Se debe respetar los derechos de todos. Aunque somos de otro país, todos somos humanos. Todos, todos tenemos derechos de tener una, una misma oportunidad de vida. No nos hacemos tontos. No nos hacen tanto caso que personas que nacieron aquí. Pero todos debemos de tener las, los mismos derechos. Es el pensamiento de María, otro de nuestros miembros. El acceso a servicios. Para la discriminación por no tener papeles. Interpretación y traducción en las clínicas. Que sea más justo y que haya oportunidad en todos los lugares. Un sistema en que todos tienen acceso a la salud, aseguranza que cubra todo. En algunas familias, en la actualidad, algunos miembros tienen asistencia médica, pero otros no. Y esto hace una gran diferencia. Acceso a interpretación en clínicas, debe ser la opción del paciente, no solo del doctor, dice Juanita, otro de nuestros miembros. Las políticas que reducen las necesidades de migrar. La economía está mal allá en nuestros países. Mejorar los sueldos en nuestros países evitaría el tener que venirnos. Cambiar políticas en Estados, Unidos, en Estados Unidos de libre comercio. Negar los impactos de coloni colonialismo que continúan. Yo personalmente no hubiera migrado si hubiera una mejor, si estuviera mejor en mi país, dice Erika, otro miembro de nuestra mesa de ni una más. Des, desmil, des, eh, perdón, desmilitarizar la frontera de México con Estados Unidos y cesar todas las políticas y de prácticas de aplicación de la ley que criminalizan y castigan a los inmigrantes y a los miembros de la comunidad fronteriza. Cambiar la política que tienen como cómo va a ser la migración en el futuro, cómo dar la oportunidad a las personas que por cualquier situación, por cualquier necesidad, tienen que venir a este país, ya sea por economía, ya sea por una persecución, ya muchas veces por hambre también. Esto es lo que nos gustaría que ustedes, que son unos grandes líderes que tienen la voz y las personas que pueden hacer este cambio, que lo puedan hacer la comunidad, y lo siento por mi emoción. Sufre mucho. Hay mucha discriminación y mucho dolor en muchas familias. Ojalá que esto cambie y que nos dé una oportunidad de vida a muchos. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias, um, Gaby. Uh, me va a hacer llorar con sus bellas palabras. Uh, sabe que estamos en la lucha y, y, y gracias por compartir eh, pues las historias ¿no? de, de tanta gente ¿no? que, que, que está en este, en este país que sufre de injusticias que está con todas las cosas encima, ¿no? el, el sistema migratorio, usted mencionó también varias de las pólizas que deben ser cambiadas para mejorar este, eh, este sistema no solamente de la perspectiva de migratoria, pero sino uh, la criminal, ¿no? muchas de las de las personas que terminan en manos de inmigraciones a través de, pues, injustamente de, de interacciones con la policía o con uh, uh, otros uh, eh, eh, uh, uh, 
miembros de, de, la, de la policía. Entonces, muchas gracias, Gaby, por compartir sus palabras. Um, and um, with that, I want to next uh, bring our, our last uh, speaker. Um, her name is Nermina Muchkanovic. She is the Constituents uh, Services Director with the Office of uh, Congresswoman Diana Deguet. Uh, creo que no, no, no tenemos aquí um, a Nermina. No sé si la estamos escuchando. Ah, creo que um, no pudimos este, uh, uh, tener a, a Nermina. Pero eh, bueno, eso, con eso vamos a dar concluida eh, pues la sección de, de nuestros uh, um, hablantes, nuestros speakers. Um, thank you so much. Uh, with that, we'll conclude our section of our speakers. And um, I would also like to um, end up with a, a call of action and then we'll move on to question and answers. So um, for our first uh, uh, call to action, we wanna announce that uh, all of the groups in this, uh, in this uh, meeting, in this uh, press conference, we'll, are, uh, we'll be having a call-in day to call all of our senators in, uh, in Colorado, um, Senator Michael Bennett and Senator uh, Hickenlooper on April 15 of 12 p.m. We will be sending out uh, an invite to all of our lists and we will share a script with uh, the community in general to, um, you know, to talk about what are some of the bills that we talked about in this press conference and uh, what can they do to make those bills better for our community. Um, I would also like to uh, pass on the word to Adriana Aguirre Um, um, an organizer with Together Colorado to tell us more about a town hall. Adrian. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, Salvador. My name is Adrian Aguirre de Chais. I am a community organizer with Together Colorado. Uh, Together Colorado is a nonpartisan, multiracial, multi faith community organization uh, working to transform communities across the state of Colorado through community organizing. Um, I would like to invite you to a follow-up event happening on Saturday, May 1st, uh, being hosted by many of the same community organizations and immigrant rights advocates that you uh, see on the press conference today. Uh, we'll be hosting a town hall on Saturday, May 1st from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. virtually um, over Zoom. And we are inviting our entire uh, Colorado congressional delegation to attend, uh, including both of our senators and all of our representatives, uh, to present to them the same, the same critique that uh, was presented today and to ask them very direct questions about their plans to support and strengthen uh, these bills and a pathway to citizenship for all of our beloved community members. Um, so we would like to invite all of you um, who are viewing to attend the event with us to help us uh, interact with and collaborate with and put some pressure on our representatives and senators. Uh, more information will be sent out shortly. We hope you can join us on May 1st. Thank you, Adrian, for, uh, for that update. Uh, please keep in touch with all of the groups uh, in this uh, coalition um, and to, to make sure that how, how you can uh, make an impact, how can you hold your elected officials accountable. We, have, we will have more uh, events or an opportunities to volunteer and to hold uh, all of the members of Congress accountable. And with that, I will also like to end with uh, uh, you know, just reading some of the comments and questions that we got from uh, community. Um, I can see there's a, a ton of them in the, in the chat function. Thank you so much for uh, dropping those in there. Uh, Maria Cerros Vargas asks, how can we help as a community to get more people to join uh, their lives and, and get informed? How can we help as a community to get more people to join the lives and get informed. Um, I would like to, uh, Pamela, would you like to um, say something to that, to those regards? How can the community get more involved? Yeah, um, well, thank you so much for, for the question. Um, I see another question that I'll also quickly address. But one of the uh, 
best ways to continue to get involved is to join at the efforts of any of the organizations that are part of this press conference today, as well as part of the other 22 organizations that are part of the um, immigrant resistance table. A lot of us do a lot of intersectional work. And so there are definitely different spaces for one to get involved. Uh, you can see our, our Facebook pages as well as our um, Instagram pages on the Facebook event. So we encourage for y'all to follow. Um, also to support uh, financially the work that we're all doing. Um, you can make a donation. You can become a sustainable donor for all of these organizations to continue the work that they're doing. Um, and I would also say that another way to get involved is um, to join uh, sort of webinars and forums of this sort so that people can have more information and so that you can hold your elected officials not only accountable but to get, um, get them to do the work and uh, to represent all constituents within their districts who um, who are impacted by by either these policies or um, by by the work that we're all doing. Um, I also see a quick question as to how immigration protections and labor protections are connected. We all know that immigrant rights are workers' rights. We know that when workers are being attacked, um, that's impacting everyone. And when undocumented workers speak out against wage theft, poor working conditions, intimidation, or harassment, they run the risk of um, facing deportation by their employers because they call on ICE. As so the protection for workers and protection for undocumented workers are very important and very intertwined. Um, and all workers hold constitutional rights regardless of their status. And so organizing to ensure that places have um, a union as well as um, safe working conditions is a way to continue to advocate uh, for the folks in our community who are on the front lines. Thank you, Pamela, for uh, for those questions and for addressing the other uh, questions. Feel free to, you know, um, also answer uh, many of the questions that I might have missed. Um, Erika on Facebook Live says, uh, "Bravo, Gaby! Uh, gracias por ser la voz de ni uno más. Seguimos en la lucha." Uh, muchas gracias, Gaby, por eso. Uh, um, another question uh, that I can see from Gina McPhee says. Can the state legislature demand safer workplace rules for essential immigrant workers, like in the dairy farm industry? I feel like um, uh, Jennifer Piper, would you, would you have any comments on that? Yeah, I think there are, um, the, the short answer is yes. And um, part of what is happening right now at the Colorado legislature are some efforts to improve conditions um, beyond the really low floor that has been set by the federal government for agricultural workers as well as dairy um, and other uh, ranching industries. Uh, what would be most impactful though would be uh, legislation at the federal level that recognizes the labor rights of human beings, whether their status is undocumented, um, temporary through a work visa or documented. And um, many people don't realize that the uh, domestic workers and agricultural workers are actually excluded from a lot of labor laws that apply to everyone else in the workforce. And that leads to dangerous conditions for them and for their employers. So we're hopeful to see some changes at the state legislature this year. Um, and actually another partner, uh, Project Protect uh, Farm Workers, um, and food system workers are the ones who are leading that effort right now, currently. And I will um, drop the link to their Facebook page as well as that bill in the comments on Facebook. Thank you so much for that answer. And I think with that, we are right on time to wrap it up. Um, thank you all so much for all of those of you who joined uh, from home. Uh, please uh, stay safe. Um, wear your masks, uh, we're, not, we're not done with this pandemic. And just to finalize this, I would also like to remind 
of a couple of um, uh, action steps that you could take. Uh, all of the links are on the on the Facebook comment on the chat, but we will have this uh, call in day on April 15. We will also have a town hall on May 1st. And there's also been um, a, a GoFundMe dropped on the chat for uh, for the farm work with that. And, uh, you know, thank you all so much again uh, for joining this, um, this press conference. I would also like to thank all of the uh, organizations who made this possible, the Colorado Immigrant Rights Coalition, Together Colorado, Colorado Justice, Justice AFSC, and Mi Familia Vota. Uh, thank you also to all of the speakers who join and all of the elected officials who are here. And uh, with that, um, we're gonna wrap it this up. Thank you so much and you all have a good rest of your day. And we'll um, provide the report card to the press. Um, if you registered for this press conference, you'll receive a sum up with the record, report card and a one pager from us. So thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Don't forget about that. <laughs> um, and we're no longer live, correct? I would also like to apologize for that mistake that I made. Oh, it's um, all good. I got all confused and I thought... Um, um, before to we speak. get into that, um, it, are there any questions from Telemundo <laughs> or Moises, Connor, anyone else before we break?